That's right. You're the Schleg Daddy. You're the best. OTR is central. Better than the rest. Yes. Oh, oh, shit. Sorry, guys. Damn it. I keep track of when this camera turns on. In case you're wondering what I'm doing. Jesus. I just finally got a chance to take a look at the Royal Rumble poster, and... You know, I'm getting old. If I didn't think I was getting that old, maybe, maybe I need glasses. Maybe I've reached that point in time in my life, since some of y'all think I'm bald anyway. Uh, but, but maybe you can help me. Here's the Royal Rumble poster. And I'm looking, and I see The Undertaker, John Cena, Penis Power, Everybody's Hero Roman Reigns, Goldberg, Kevin Owens, Brock Lesnar. But I'll tell you what I don't see is AJ Styles. Now maybe, this has got to be a misprint. Oh, I think I found him. There he is. There he is. That's right. That's right. You're AJ Styles, damn it. You're the 2016 WWE Superstar of the Year. And you didn't even bother having a slammy show because they didn't need to because everybody knew it. And you don't take a backseat to anybody. You made it, brother. You're on the Royal Rumble poster. Again, you don't take a backseat to anybody. A except uh, Rich Swan, Sasha Banks, a suspect sissy, Dean Ambrose, Kofi Kingston, Seth Rollins. Something that I'm missing here. Something seems to be very wrong with this picture. But oh well. Let's get on to the business at hand. It's time to talk about Monday Night Raw, bitches! Now, a lot of you probably think Raw is missing something, a lot of something, every single week. And last week, the Raw review, I had some fun. I enjoyed it. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, though. It's like something was missing. You know what I mean? It's like one of those things where the answer's stuck on the tip of your tongue, but it just doesn't come out, and you battle yourself over it, and you get frustrated and flustered, and then eventually you remember. That's kind of how this feels. Something's missing. Well, I gotta figure this out. It's killing me. It's killing me. And I, I think I know what I need to do. I need to channel a higher power. And maybe that'll help do the trick. Well, let's see if this works. I am one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I am one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I am one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I am one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I am one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I am one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I am one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I am one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I am one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I'm one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I'm one with the hunter, the Hurston Helmsley. I got it! I know what was missing. I absolutely know what was missing. I've got it! Are you ready? Oh, oh I know you're ready. In three, two, one, go. That really is pretty gay, isn't it? Eh, oh well. I'm with the show. Now, it's not bad enough that the WWE makes it incredibly difficult to watch a three-hour-plus Raw every week. Now this week, you're going up against the National Championship game, promising to be an instant classic, a rematch between Clemson and Alabama, a really good game last year, promised to potentially be even better this year, and lo and behold, what do you know it absolutely was? Roll Tide? Man, they rolled their asses right on over when it mattered most. <laughs> Eat shit, Chase Oliver. <laughs> Anyways, you know, it's one thing to sit there and feel kind of stupid for watching Raw, just in general anyways, but especially head up against the national championship game. But then the WWE makes sure that they just top it all off, and they insult your intelligence right from the beginning. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but last week, one of the major announcements coming out of it was 
that The Undertaker was going to appear this week on Raw. This was counter-programming to the National Championship game. The Undertaker was going to be here. And then all of a sudden we kick off Raw, and for two hours we're wasting precious television time with Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley going through this whole fucking rigmarole about whether or not The Undertaker is going to show up or not, to the point where they're even changing the graphics to put a question mark there, as if it's any fucking surprise whether or not The Undertaker is going to be there. It's one thing to not listen to your fans. It's another thing to not care about your fans. But it is an entirely different thing to insult your fans' intelligence. Now, granted, sometimes looking at us as a community of wrestling fans, we're not the brightest tools in the shed. I'll grant you that. But come on. This is already letting you know that this is going to be a crappy night when from the very beginning, immediately, we're losing any and all hope of any type of continuity and story from one week to the next. Absolutely ridiculous. And it almost did a lot to really ruin the eventual appearance of The Undertaker later on in the show. Because you're sitting there and you're like, if they're wasting their time doing all of this, maybe that segment's going to be a waste of time. Just like me talking about it anymore is a waste of time. So right from the very beginning, I thought we were jumping into Owens and Jericho versus Reigns, the two-on-one handicap match for the U.S. title. But of course, we couldn't get that because here comes Strowman, here comes Rollins, and all this other shit, and the match isn't happening. It's going to happen later on in the night, which I suppose was code for the WWE didn't have anything else to put in the main event spot, uh, code for they figure people by that point in time don't freaking care anyways, just like they probably didn't care about what they were ultimately going to do in this match, and ultimately if you're going to have Roman lose the title, why not have as few eyeballs as possible actually see it happen? Because you can't make Cena 2.0 look bad. <sighs> My god. If that doesn't suck you in, <laughs> we're not getting it now. We're going to wait three hours, then we're going to give it to you. <laughs> well, who the hell this Braun Strowman is, but he's got no business in Roman Reigns' business. Yeah, that exactly, that's what I thought. Bitch ass needs to get back on Tinder where the fuck he belongs. Oh, just a big fat country boy looking for loving. Well, when you're Roman Reigns, the lover comes and finds you, bitch. Get the fuck out of Roman Reigns' way, or get destroyed. Hell yeah, bitches. Jesus Christ, where did this Braun Strowman shit come from? This dude's freaking everywhere. Right from the very beginning. He wants Goldberg. He wants Reigns. He wants his man. More so, probably according to Tinder, he just wants a man. He, Tinder pick. But instead, he gets Seth Rollins. Now, instead of having Seth Rollins really shine here, or booking... Braun Strowman like the monster you're supposed to be booking him like, like you want to pretend him to be, to build him up for something bigger and better at WrestleMania, we do the crappy lazy double count out finish. Because, of course, the WWE fucking would. Braun Strowman. Now, to be fair, I've not exactly been enthralled by what Raw has done with the cruiserweights outside of the Brian Kendrick, of course. But this week I got like a a bright light, a shining beacon of white light. It was awesome. Let it not be said that the Schleg Daddy doesn't have an appreciation for the smaller guys in WWE because this Jack Gallagher, now that's a man, a real man's man, a gentle man. You know, anybody could sit there and be six foot four, 265 pounds, eat right, work out, lift weights, but a real man can get to the big show weighing 165 pounds, being wider than Seamus, and having the most kick-ass mustache that I have seen. Sorry, Simon Gotch, that includes you too. Now this, this, ladies and gentlemen, Jack Gallagher, this is somebody you can get behind. This is somebody who should be prominently featured in the cruiserweight division. And if you don't appreciate that, may I suggest you meet me at the pub and we'll engage in some full-blooded fisticuffs. Huh?
Huh? See, I see right through the bullshit, Alicia Fox. I don't believe for a second that you have any interest in Cedric Alexander whatsoever. Everybody knows you love the white boys. It's true. It's true. So why hide it? Why fight it? You finally caved in and you showed Noam Dar what it's like to take a trip to the jungle, baby. <laughs> well, you're right. Maybe he couldn't handle a real woman. But when you're looking for a real man, Alicia, you know where to come. And I'll give you something to kiss. I'm not the type of guy that does that on YouTube there, okay? Of course, to counter the national championship game that Raw was going to run head-to-head -head against, instead of making the show really good, or having built up new, interesting, fresh faces into big stars that would be compelling enough where people would sit there and want to TiVo the national championship game, or watch Raw and then just flip to the national championship game during the commercials, the WWE, of course, has to go the old retired part-timer route. So in walks Shawn Michaels. And usually when you get a Shawn Michaels appearance, you figure he's going to kind of roam around the point a little bit and he's going to go off script. But eventually he's going to bring it home and he's going to be effective. Not in New Orleans. Not in New Orleans. Oh my God. This segment was shitty. I never thought I would see the day that Shawn Michaels had a microphone in his hand and I would be begging for him to please shut the fuck up. Nobody gives a shit about that movie. Nobody gives a shit about his one eye going this way and the other eye going that way. Just nobody gives a shit about anything he was fucking talking about. It was terrible. And you know, I thought maybe Enzo and Big Cass could save it. They couldn't even save it. The only redeeming quality of this entire segment was Rusev. Rusev fucking rules, man. Rusev is the fucking man. What this whole segment felt like to me is one of those examples where the company tries to sit there and put somebody in a position. They're trying to get behind somebody. They're getting behind somebody. Then they give them an opportunity, a moment in the spotlight, and they fall flat on their fucking face, like Gangrel did all those years back. And then somebody else kind of comes up out of the woodworks and saves it, and then you start to realize, maybe this should be the center of attention. Hence Edge. I remember when that happened, all those many years ago. Gangrel was falling flat on his face. Edge pulled it together and saved the segment. That's what it felt like here. The guy from Bulgaria, who speaks less than perfect English, had to bail out the WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. WrestleMania, the greatest WWE superstar of all time. You know the shit's bad. When the vortex of suck that is raw is pulling in icons and legends like the Heartbreak Kid. If anything, above all else, this raw will be remembered for two things. The Undertaker and Rusev really turning a corner and people starting to get behind Rusev, pay attention, WWE. It's time to give the man a face turn. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Rusev fucking rules. Braun Strowman. <laughs> Give me a second. Give me a second, please. Oh, oh. Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega. Oh, God. Kenny Omega. Oh, God. Kenny Omega. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to show up this late in the review, but I couldn't help it. I was watching Wrestle Kingdom 11 again. Greatest New Japan show I've ever seen until the next one that I see because all of them are great. But I gotta tell you, man. Okada versus Kenny Omega. The greatest professional wrestling match I have ever seen. Ever seen. <laughs> oh my God. And clearly, everybody agrees. But fuck you, Dave Meltzer. How dare you, sir? If you keep this up, I will be canceling my subscription to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. And I mean it, mister. Six stars. Six stars! You dunderhead!
You forgot about the bonuses for Okada being in the match. Kenny Omega being in the match. It being a New Japan match. It being a Wrestle Kingdom match. It being in the Tokyo Dome match. This was easily a 20-star match. 20 stars. Greatest professional wrestling extravaganza of all time. And you gave it six stars. One more out of you, mister, and I'm canceling my subscription to the newsletter. Swear to God. You will no longer get my business. But clearly everybody agreed. What? The Schlag Daddy said what? He said Kenny Omega's not the best in-ring performer of all time? The fuck are you guys doing? Why didn't you let me know this shit? Well, each to their own, I get... What? 101 things in WWE better than Sami Zayn. That's it! I've had it with this bullshit! The Schlag Daddy likes to come on here and think he's all cool and funny and bury people. Well, he's about to get buried by me. You guys come back later this week, and I'm going to show his ass. I got something for him. 101 things, yeah, yeah. 101 things better than OTRS Central. Now, clearly there's a whole lot more, including me. But we're going to show his ass. We're going to clown him. We're going to school him. Because Kenny Omega is the greatest in-ring performer of all time. And Sami Zayn is easily, easily, easily one of the best motherfucker wrestlers in the world. To get to the point about halfway through all, you're about an hour and a half in, you got about an hour and a half or so left to go. And it becomes a battle. It becomes a struggle. It becomes a fight. And I'm looking for something to keep me going. I'm looking for something to give me a kickstart. I'm looking for something, frankly, to keep me awake. So the WWE decides that they're going to give me Luke Gallows versus Sheamus with Carl Anderson on commentary. <laughs> the Viper Randall Keith Orton. <laughs> Don't dish Sean Watson's nuts taste great. Chase out of front 68. Yay! I'm not gonna lie. There are only two reasons I watched this week's Raw at all. Number one, to do the review. And number two, to see the dead man, The Undertaker. Because when The Undertaker shows up, no matter what, it's just different. It's a reminder of what professional wrestling can be. It's a reminder of what the WWE used to be. It's that brief fleeting moment of peering back behind the curtain, so to speak, of wrestling and seeing what greatness can be. And, you know, all these years later, The Undertaker's 30-minute entrance still gets me. His slow man walk still gets me. The way he enters the ring still gets me. The way he holds the microphone still gets me. The way he's kind of slow and measured and calculated with the words that he says it still gets me, man. It, it is incredible stuff. So as you can imagine, I was really excited because once he showed up, I found out even last week that he was going to be there. I knew what this meant. They weren't going to waste an Undertaker appearance for nothing. Not the Undertaker. He's entering the Royal Rumble. I got shit falling everywhere. The freaking powers of the dead man are coming through the camera, through YouTube. That's right. 29 holes for 29 souls. That's what he dug. It almost sounds like a warped WWE porn featuring Tony Atlas and Pat Patterson. 29 souls, 29 holes. That's what awaits all of them Sunday, January 29th at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas at the 2017 Royal Rumble, where The Undertaker will enter, hopefully number 30. The Undertaker will throw the last man over the top rope. The Undertaker will win the Royal Rumble. And then the dream is still alive and it'll be a reality. It'll happen. The Undertaker will go on to WrestleMania to face... Strowman. And if you have a problem with that, 
I will yoke you up. I mean it, Piglet Power. I will yoke you up. No. No, Piglet. WWE Champion John Cena at WrestleMania. But anyways, I digress. I, I don't know what they're really doing with this Divas crap. You know, are we focused on Bailey and Charlotte and Bailey's pursuit of Charlotte and the Women's Championship? Or are we really shifting into Daniel Bryan, Triple H's rip-off storylines here with Bailey and forget Stephanie? And how ridiculous it is you sit there and you have Stephanie punk her out, talking about Bailey and Sasha, and they just sit there and turn tail and leave. That's just ridiculous. And, and now we've been building this whole show. You get this tag match with Bailey and Sasha versus Nia Jackson, Charlotte. Oh, goody! Nia goes over. She's already tapped out at a previous pay per view. You made her look stupid. You just had Bailey fucking pin her because Sasha Banks came out on the ramp. This company can't get shit right. And Charlotte? What the fuck does this company see in that bitch? Other than her penis power. She brings nothing to the table. Her matches are crappy and botchy. She does not look good. She's not very good on the microphone. And her personality absolutely stinks. This hard-on for Charlotte just defies all logic. This bitch sucks. Stop pushing her. She's like mid-2000s Randy Orton in terms of the level of force as a women's equivalent. Minus the in-ring abilities. Jesus. Now, I know lately some of you out there, the internet hardcore fans, haven't exactly liked the gospel that I've been preaching. You haven't exactly been down with what I've been saying. And you know, I feel bad about that. I really, really do. And you know how Titus O'Neil this time tried to do the keg challenge to, to show the New Day that he was serious, that he belongs, that he wants to be one of them? I wanted to show you that I admire you and that I respect you. And, and, and I wanted to express this in a way that I felt appropriate. I want your acceptance. I need your love. So what the Schleg Daddy's going to do right now is give you some strength training. We're going to lift some weights. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Oh, man, I tell you, oh. you can do this, Slate Daddy. You can do it. This is for you guys. I just want you to know how much I respect you. I want to prove to you that I could be a great wrestler, too. I could be like one of your heroes. I could be just like Kyle O'Reilly. I could be just like Roderick Strong. I could just be like Kenny Omega. And I'm going to prove it to you. Come on, Shelly Daddy, you can do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And you know what? If I want to be a big time independent professional wrestling star, I don't have to do it. Who needs weights? I'll see you later. I gotta go play some video games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have been summoned by the god of one, two, three books to save this once great channel from all you nerdy fast food cooks. 
you glorify the spot monkey. And you think that's just me? Very soon, things will get funky when you are rendered totally obsolete. Everyone can easily be replaced. All soon will fear me, for you will all be erased. <laughs> By me, the shattered Schleck Daddy. <laughs> so we finally got mercifully to the end of the night. The handicapped two on one U.S. title match. Owens and Jericho versus Roman Reigns. You've seen Jericho and Roman wrestle a ton. You've seen Owens and Roman wrestle a ton. So what better way to start off on a new trajectory for the new year than to come up with this crazy idea of let's have two of them face Roman. That'll get the people really behind him. Now surely this is a great highlight for many of you. Chris Jericho wins. Chris Jericho is the U United States champion. And it's great and it's glorious. And if I crap on this moment, you're probably going to tweet at him to put me on the list. And that's fine, fine, fine. But all I'll say is this. You can have your fleeting moment. You can have this little bit of hope spot that this company is backing off of him. But now, he's not burdened with that anchor of a mid-card title. He could do something different. He could go on to bigger, better, and redder belts. All I'll say is, be careful what you wish for. Because you might not like what you get. <sighs> Again, the WWE stacks the deck against my boy Romy's. It's unfair, I tell you. Unfair. Um, but that's okay. All you nerds can sit there and get off to Roman losing that U.S. title. It's okay. You can have your moment. Because at the end of the day, Roman is still going to reign and rule supreme all over you lame bitches. Because ultimately, Summer knows four things are true. Number one, Chris Jericho is a bitch. Number two, Kevin Owens is a fat ass. Number three, Sami Zayn still sucks. And number four, most importantly of all, now Roman Reigns doesn't have to worry about some stupid mid-card title that's beneath him. He can go on to the Royal Rumble and win the WWE Universal Championship like he's supposed to. Roman's for the next champion. Hell yeah, bitches. And if you don't like it, fuck off. Roman, love you, Roman. Call me. Roman, love you! Call me, Roman. In closing, you know, this was just another one of many hits recently from the WWE when it comes to Raw. This was not good. Not good. Hopefully this review scores much better with you than Raw does. I guess time will tell. But, to be fair, when it all is said and done, I think there's one thing that you could say about this review. Is at least it's still better than Sami Zayn.